I have always said that if I wasn't a teacher in a past life, I'm pretty sure I was someone who just organized things for people. Pantries, closets, and definitely classroom teaching supplies. One of my favorite things to organize is math resources because we all know that's one of those things that you just open that closet door and you have a bounty of in your classroom. Today we're talking about one of the largest challenges to tackle when it comes to math organization, and that is those math centers. We use them, we love them, we need a place to store them. Today I'm sharing some of my favorite ways to organize and keep tidy all of my math center resources. Make sure you stick around to the end because I have a freebie that's gonna help you live out all of your biggest and brightest math center organizational dreams. First things first when it comes to organizing our math centers is that we need to have some math centers to organize. There's a few things I always suggest when you are picking math centers to work with your students. I like to choose between eight and 10 math centers that are going to address one area of what I'm teaching in math at a time. So when I'm in my addition unit of instruction, I wanna have a bounty of addition centers for my students to work with. This means when they finish one center, they can just roll to the next one. It's gonna save me a lot of prep time in the end. So make sure you have enough centers for your students to work in through the course of the unit that you're teaching. Another suggestion to think about is choosing the same style activities. If I see a math game that's available for multiple topics, that's gonna to be the first thing I grab because it means I'm not gonna to have to keep reteaching my students new centers. Pick centers that follow the same patterns and rules. My next step for organizing your math centers is for you to go ahead and take the time to prep them. Get them ready for use in your classroom. When you're picking between eight to 10 centers, that means a good amount of prep time is gonna go into this. So a few things I like to do. I like to look ahead at my centers and see what I already have from years past that I wanna go ahead and use with this year's center rotation for that unit of instruction. That's gonna save me a lot of time and hassle. Also, I love to laminate and then cut on the couch while I'm watching Netflix at night. That is such a great way for me to kind of protect my peace and be productive at the same time. Also, use those classroom volunteers. If you have a parent who is itching to help in the classroom, send things home to them to cut out or have them come in and help you prep those centers maybe once a month. Use those resources to help you get your math centers ready to go. So the first category of organizing you need to think about is where are the math centers going to live while your students are using them. So when you are teaching your addition unit of instruction, where are your addition centers going to be in your classroom? There's so many great ways you can do this. I suggest something that's both student friendly and teacher friendly. Things like these photo cases are great to use for centers if your pieces are all small. Another favorite is a simple pencil pouch situation. You can label them on the front, you could even write on them in a brightly colored Sharpie. And I love these because you can put all of the things you need for that center inside the pouch so it's ready to go for your students. Other wonderful things we've seen teachers do in their classroom. I have long been a lover of a tin drawer cart. If I have 10 centers, I have 10 drawers. They all just live in their own drawer. Makes it really easy for my students to find where they need to go next. Another thing to consider, if the center you're using requires math manipulatives, how are you gonna make those manipulatives available to your students when they're working in that center and only in that center? Nothing's worse than being in the middle of your math small group and having a student come up and saying, I need a dice, I need a dice. Make the dice available to them. Some of my favorite ways to do that, especially if you're using things like pencil pouches, carts or trays for your students to have access to those centers, is to use smaller containers that live in those spaces with the resources you need. That way they know if they need a dice, they can go grab them from here. Other things like timers, unifix cubes, counters, have those available and ready for your students in a place they know where they are so they can get them and use them while they complete the math center. Another great example of having everything all in one place so your students aren't having to come ask you for something or hunt for the resources they need to complete the center is using an envelope system. These envelopes that are clear and durable are beautiful, but I gotta tell you, I'm an old school girly. 
give me a whole box of manila envelopes and I promise I'm gonna use the entire box over the course of a school year. A manila envelope or a vinyl envelope like this is an awesome tool to use for your math centers. I love these because they're large enough that you can fit entire sheets of paper, both on the outside and on the inside. So for example, this is one of our board games from our math curriculum that I love to use as one of my math centers. I put the rules on the outside, it has the list of supplies, and then all of the resources my students need tucked right inside, including the game cards. My other favorite resource that I use every single time I'm prepping math centers is Ziploc baggies. Now that I've shown you some options for how you can organize your centers when your students are actively using them and needing to get to them, I want to make sure I give you ways to organize them when your students aren't actively using them. If you think about it, you're really only focusing on one math unit at a time, which means you need to find a place to put all of the other centers you're not using during those times of the year. Now, we have seen so many beautiful ways to do this. I'm talking perfectly labeled closets. This is me telling you, it can all live in a gallon Ziploc bag, and that is a-okay. These fit perfectly in a filing cabinet, and this is something I've done for years. All of my centers for this unit come out of the pencil pouch when I'm done teaching it, and go in the Ziploc bag until I need it for next year. Another resource I love for organizing centers when my students are not actively using them is any kind of locking tote. These are great because the handles lock on, you're not gonna lose anything, and they're stackable because they have lids. Both great resources to use to organize those centers when your students aren't using them. I told you I had a freebie that was gonna help, but I have to tell you about our math centers first. We do have beautiful collections of math centers available for our favorite grade levels to hang out with. These math centers have everything you need for each unit of instruction that would be taught using Common Core standards in that grade level. My favorite thing about these math centers is that they are easy to prep and they follow the same patterns through each unit. So if you get the year-long resource of all of the math centers you need for your entire year of instruction, you're only going to have to teach your students how to do the center activities once since they follow the same patterns through each unit. These are some of my favorite tools to use in my math centers because they make it easy for me and easy for my students to be successful. My freebie today that's going to help you organize the classroom of your dreams, have all of your math centers right where you need them and right where you can see them, is our free collection of math center labels. These guys are available for all of our grade levels that we work with, second through fifth, and I gotta tell you, they are cute. I love printing these in color. You can slap these into those photo cases, your pencil pouches, whatever resource you're using to organize your centers. We have all of the designs you could possibly need right in this resource. Remember, it's a freebie. It's ready for you right now. I have the link up in the cards and down in the description box for you. Make sure you grab it. If you're looking for help in terms of getting math centers started in your classroom, the behavior management that comes along with math centers, what are you doing while your students are doing the math centers? How many math centers am I supposed to teach? Don't worry, I answer all of those questions in this playlist. Make sure you check out our math centers playlist here on YouTube to answer any and all questions floating around in the universe of math centers. Now that your professional organizer, Caroline, has helped you organize your math centers, please let me know what I can help you tackle next in your classroom. I told you I might have missed my calling. It might not actually be third grade. It might just be organizing things for people. I would love to help you out. Let me know in the comments what area of your classroom do you need more help with in terms of organizing. As always, I put out new content here on YouTube every single week and we would love to have you join our community. If you are not already, please hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you join us. As always, happy organizing and I hope you have a not so wimpy day. Bye.